the record on News Talk. Now we are joined in studio by Owen Corrie, travel writer and editor of Travel Extra. We're talking about uh, more developments in the Ryanair situation as well as um, the Iberian heatwave, which has seen incredible temperatures in both Spain and Portugal. But first and foremost, Owen, on the situation at Ryanair and the ongoing industrial strife, not just here in Ireland, but across other countries on the continent as well. What are you expecting to happen this week? Because it is a very fluid situation. It's the we uh, pilots have been of Europe have been waiting for this for a long, long time. Um, they've got a lot more power than the cabin crew. It's quite interesting how the queue of unions having to have a pop off Ryanair are led by the pilots who probably have the least grievances. And um, as you say, fifteen unions in eight countries. Um, it's creating a lot of noise. It's actually not creating a huge amount of cancellations, mm. but the noise is certainly damaging. Ryanair share price has dropped about uh, 14, 15% in two weeks and people are being stressed to the gills. Uh, you know, their summer holidays coming up and even though very small numbers of flights are being uh, uh, affected, you would actually think, listening to the airways, Ryanair was shutting down. Mm. And I mean, just you mentioned the effect on the share price, but reputationally as well, in the eyes of consumers, even those who, as you say, haven't been affected themselves, this does have an impact. A lot of people will never book uh, with Ryanair again until they go online and see the prices of the competitors. Mm. Then they come back to Ryanair. That's the history of Ryanair's, um, you know, the, the unions have set out more or less to trash the brand, but uh, they are incapable of trashing a brand which has done an awful lot to damage itself over the years and still manages to get the customers. We need to put a context in this. Uh, Ryanair's uh, passenger numbers for July, when a lot of the, you know, not so much um, in the main markets, but certainly uh, there was the beginning of the stirrings of union uh, discontent in the places like Italy and Spain and Germany that matter. Ireland's a very small proportion of it. They pa- they carried uh, 13.1 million passengers. Um, what that is in world history is the largest, the most carried by a European airline ever in one month uh, since the glory days of Aeroflot in the old Soviet Union. Mm. And that shows the, the the size of the Ryanair product. We're a little bit obsessed um, with what IALPA is saying. IALPA have 95 out of 350 pilots in the Dublin base. A union recognition, it's a different type of union recognition agreement was signed up by the rest of the pilots back in February. But um, what, we, you know, the the way Irish society and media and everything like that is stacked up is that we treat uh, a serious trade union with a history and uh, credibility that I outplay it seriously. Mm. They aren't actually made laying a glove on Ryanair. Uh, stopping 10 flights out of 130 outbound last week is a very, very small impact. Yeah. But the no, they, 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 what they do, have, the, web, the button they keep pressing is the amount of damage they can do to forward bookings and to really stress people out when they're coming to their holidays. Mm. I mean, you, you say that there hasn't been a huge amount of actual flights so Can't far. No. But, I mean, is there a potential for that to tumble on and to escalate? At, oh, at absolutely. If uh, we get a uh, co-concerted uh, cabin crew, uh, you know, cabin crew have more uh, discernible grievances. I don't think anyone in the country can tell you what the pilots are quite striking about um it's it's very procedural it's you know we have this crazy situation of uh you know a couple of weeks ago who where are we going to meet and this week oh you changed the wording on nine of the agreed of the 11 points it's petulant and a lot of it's to do with history and egos uh, evan cullen the pr- uh, president of ialpa his history with ryanair is pretty as, as antagonistic as mm. as you can get in hr terms michael o'leary has said the most appalling things about trade unions even the time they recognize, decided to recognise trade unions in December, the Ryanair person, not Michael O'Leary, said, uh, we will hope to hear from the unions as soon as they get out of bed. These guys really, really, really uh, wind each other up like boxers before a prize fight. But that's all great fun. And they all play their little dance and they go into negotiations and walk out of them and all of that. But it is stressing people to the gills. Mm. And what we, we're going to see um, is a lot of people watching what the bigger trade unions and particularly the cabin crew uh, who have more discernible uh, complaints 
um, and uh, get, when four of them get together, they actually, you know, they, they caused uh, a huge amount of cancellations proportionally in Belgium. Belgium is the one country where it's looking like up to 40, 50 percent of the flights are getting cancelled. Okay, so there's a bigger impact. And there, bigger anyway. impact in Spain because the numbers are bigger. Mm. Uh, we, we can lose 25 percent of the flights in Spain through the cabin crew dispute. So we, that's where the real, um, it's, it's really what's, what's coming down the tracks for Ryanair. Ryanair are sticking to their guns. We're going to fly through the dispute. We can move our assets around. And what worries me, by the way, uh, Kieran, is that, um, you know, Ireland's a small part of the Ryanair machine and they could just get grumpy, just get cranky and say, let's pull the capacity out of Ireland. If they turn capacity in on and off this island, which they can do like a tap, they are responsible for 40%, 40% of the flights on and off the island. If they reduce it by one fifth, as they're going to do for winter, that's 8%. That's about 400 million euro hit for the Irish tourism economy. And that would be done just out of sheer crankiness, throwing the Boeing 737-800s out of the pram. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned that this hasn't been able to lay a glove on Ryanair in terms of Not the the union action so far. But where do you rank this in terms of, you know, Ryanair has faced a number of challenges and different threats to its business model and to its existence over the years. Where does this rank in there? I mean, is that is this anywhere near the top echelon of that? It's uh, what, it, what? OK, how can you measure that? It, it was growing uh, last July. The growth was 11 percent. This year, July, the growth was 4 percent. Now, the numbers are bigger and the base is bigger. But what I've seen happen is growth, which was double digit all through 2017 until they ran into that problem in September, slowing down to seven, six, now down to four. So if you're going to measure it on the slowing of growth, uh, it is it's pretty it's pretty much as big as a problem as they've come across. But you got to also put that context. You're, uh, you've come from a turboprop from Waterford to Luton in the 1980s to being the biggest airline in Europe by passenger numbers, and you're still growing by 4%. If it goes into, stops growing, that's when you really see what's happened, uh, whether the, the trade union uh, uh, activism on its own is enough to do that. It has a structural advantage until now, which was that it was pan-European. It's probably the first pan-European airlines. The other big low-cost carrier, EasyJet, would be a U- English. Wiz would mm. be very much um, if Eastern Europe. Ryanair managed to get about 14% of its, mar- of its market out of uh, Spain, um, Italy um, and uh, Britain. And it's looking for something similar out of Germany. And it's hoping to move into France because the tr- recognition of unions is part of that strategy. But what that does is means that instead of dealing with if you were Southwest, which is what Ryanair based their airline on, that was the on, model initially. It was wasn't the it? model. You're dealing with one union for the United States. Mm. These guys have 15 different unions with different cultures and different regulatory, um, different regulatory structures, and they're only in the um, you, the the, the, the markets where they're dealing with the unions. Um, so they're in the eight markets, they're in 37 different markets. So you don't have anyone you can phone up and say. This is, these are the trade union terms. Yeah, you don't have that person you can say, well, who do I speak to when I need to talk and the to really the pilots? Crazy, one, one of the crazy things that happened in February was uh, uh, IALPA, the Irish trade, they have 95 out of the 4,000 members saying that they want to negotiate on behalf of all 4,000. Um, they won the union that is probably going to take the lead in the attack on uh, Ryanair is probably um, the German union. They are... Uh, famous adversaries with Lufthansa. Mm. But this exposes another of the issues here. Um, In Germany, Belgium, Britain, Spain, Italy, they are all built, all the unions were built as a mirror of a state carrier. In Ireland, IALPA was dealing with it. They've really only one way of doing business, that's dealing with Aer Lingus. None of them have dealt with a a multinational low-cost carrier before. And it means a little bit of rethinking on the union side, which probably... Um, you know, when you, it took so long for these guys to rethink the approach from going from state sponsored to be a privatized okay. airline, uh, that it's going to take a little while before they can come to terms. And that's what makes it a little bit dangerous. Normally, these, the HR game, is, it makes no sense to anyone outside the negotiating room because of all the little tantrums and sub clauses and all of that. But that is played to a series of rules mm. like uh, any sport. But in this case, it's quite clear IALPA uh, are operating to a series of rules which isn't su- suited for the Ryanair model. And Ryanair have never played by any rules. And we could end up with a 
uh, a tantrum which would actually impact on the Irish economy or on another country. Ryanair is pulled completely out of Scandinavia, called completely yeah. their base airlines, uh, aircraft out of France. They're capable of a tantrum. And in those two cases, it wouldn't have had the huge impact on the economy it would if it happened in Ireland. Speaking of tantrums, then, we haven't heard much from Michael O'Leary throughout this whole process. He has been strangely or quiet Evan, on this. Or Evan Cullen, by yeah, the way. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we, we were interviewing, I was doing the hard shoulder this week and we were speaking to Kenny Jacobs. If that's That's been the only voice who's been out there really on this. I mean, why do you think that is? Because every time uh, Michael goes near an open microphone, he causes a, a row. Um, he's, you know, he can undo uh, uh, progress by one throwaway remark. Mm. And he's quite, I mean, his history of remarks about trade unions in particular and in the in some of the individuals in trade unions is, is pretty uh, um, antagonistic, very hard nose, very antagonistic. Okay. So I would imagine a strategy in Ryanair is to keep Michael away from the microphone and get um, even Eddie uh, Wilson, who is, you know, nicknamed the Terminator who is famously flew to Copenhagen uh, for a meeting with unions to tell them to get lost and came back again. Um, the, the public face of what's going on is going to be left to the likes of Kenny Jacobs where he... Uh, the damage of what's said can be can, can be more managed. Yeah. Well, we'll see where that it's, all, it's, that all it's goes. It's interesting yeah. to watch because you know where is the strategy coming from? There, there isn't um, a sense of you know with, with an IALPA Aer Lingus dispute, you could almost predict what was going to happen. Yeah, you're not able to do this here because the rules are not being engaged in the same way, and it'll take maybe a year or two. The bad news is we could end up with strike threat after strike threat after strike threat. Uh, and people getting stressed. Some of the it takes a year um, to for so the average person booking a summer holiday to earn what one of these pilots earns in about ten or eleven weeks. Okay, Owen, we we want to move on very quickly. And before before we go, is there a shift in sentiment going on here in terms of Irish people? When they're going on their holidays, deciding more and more to stay at home in Ireland instead, because we, we mentioned that the, the heat wave, which is currently in effect in Spain and Portugal, temperatures of 48 to 49 degrees in places, which is just extraordinary and extreme. The temperature here over Ireland, in Ireland for the past number of weeks, pushing up towards, you know, 30 odd degrees at its best. That's a lot more acceptable now for the for the average Irish tourist than, than, than 48, 49. So if that's the trend that continues, could you see more people staying on staycations? Because that's what has been happening over the summer, hasn't it? We've, we've um, yeah, the number of people travelling abroad is actually up. Is the, the number of people travelling abroad, the growth rate of that has risen mm. compared with previous years. There was a big t- fall off in summer holiday bookings during the, the hot spell. I think there is a basic trust problem we we always expect it to end and uh, the weather in ireland famously caught between two major systems icelandic low as or as high uh, can change in a flash so i do think that the, we aren't at a stage where people will trust a 2019 holiday uh, delivering sunshine in Ireland. Um, the temperatures in uh, Southern Europe are uh, soaring. Um, I mean, the, the 46.6 yesterday, we had a 47 last year in Cordoba. Uh, we had um, Northern Portugal hit uh, a, a record high. Even uh, people are going to, would always traditionally go to Barcelona, Catalonia, where it'd be a little bit cooler. Uh, that's gone up to the 40s uh, yesterday as well. And it does look like we're going to go for a world record temperature to beating the, what Athens hit. Um, and is that people turning people off holidays? Uh, this infrastructure in uh, Mediterranean Europe compared with what it would be even five, six years ago in terms mm. of air-conditioned uh, hotels, apartments, everything like that, um, are is much better than it was. I think people are not yet at a stage where they're turned off by intense heat. But uh, certainly um, it's, it is a, a huge danger for our national predilection for turning into lobsters uh, when we <laughs> step outside. It is, there is a health and safety issue for people who really uh, are not uh, used to or, uh, yeah. or moving, wandering into a heat wave in Spain. Uh, which way this is going is only going one direction. The temperature is getting higher and higher. I expect you to see the European record break, broken this year. All right. Well, my thanks to Owen Carr. Thanks to travel writer. very much, Kim.